The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, and a warm welcome to the latest installment of the CAST QCR webinar series, which is today hosted by ISOPLEXIS. My name is Shak Sita, and I work with the CAST QCR event series here at Hampton Wade, and will be chairing the session today. Today, the plan is to discuss rational design of a trimeric April-based car binding domain, um, enabling efficient targeting of multiple myeloma. This webinar will take you on a deep dive into a trimeric ex extracellular moiety of April that has enhanced binding to BCMA and TACI compared with monomeric April when incorporated into a car. I'd also like to introduce you to John Chen, technology co-inventor at Isoplexis, who will be moderating today's discussion. Um, John, did you want to say a quick hello? Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks, Shasita. Um, uh, it's great to be here, and uh, we're really looking forward to this presentation. Finally, I'd also like to introduce you to Andrea Schmidt, who is a postdoctoral research fellow of the Cellular Immunotherapy Program at MGH Cancer Center and Harvard Medical School. Andrea, would you like to say hello? Yes. Hi, thank you very much, Exida, for the kind introduction. And I would also like to um, welcome all participants of this CAR TCR webinar and thank them for their interest. Perfect. Um, so I'll start by giving us a brief introduction to the topic and setting the context for this session. I'll then hand over to Andrea for her presentation, uh, followed by John for his presentation. We'll then open up to the audience for a live Q&A. Please submit all your questions via the questions tab at the bottom of your webinar dashboard. Um, questions should be submitted throughout the webinar and we will answer all of the questions at the end. We will aim to answer all the questions in the allotted time. Uh, however, any questions that go unanswered will be passed on to Andrea and John to be answered in a post-event report which will be distributed to you after the webinar. If you would like access to this, please make sure you supply your email address when registering and opt in to receive emails from us. So now, without further ado, we'll get started with the session. As you know, chimeric antigen receptor T cells have de demonstrated great potential for the treatment of certain B cell neoplasms, um, including multiple myeloma. And so far, the most promising results of the CAR T therapy in multiple myeloma have been through targeting the BCMA target. Uh, however, most missions in response to BCMA-directed CAR T therapy haven't been sustained long term. Under the selective pressure of monospecific anti-BCMA CAR T treatment, we get the emergence of BCMA escape variants, and therefore continuous improvement of CAR T therapies for multiple myeloma is an important medical need. Andrea and her team have been engineering a novel trimeric April, uh, standing for a proliferation-inducing ligand based CAR uh, that allows efficient targeting of both BCMA positive and BCMA negative multiple myeloma. By leveraging the natural ligand receptor pair, the April-based CARs facilitate bispecific targeting of multiple myeloma associated antigens, such as BCMA, and the transmembrane activator and CAML interactor. Thus, natural ligands of CAR antigen binding domains may necessitate further engineering for optimal engagement and multimerization to efficiently translate CAR binding into T cell activation. So with that, I'd like to hand over to Andrea to give us more detail on this study and the work that she's been focusing on. Andrea? Hello. Thank you very much again um, for the kind introduction. And I would like by um, giving you my presentation, uh, which is entitled Rational Design of a Trimeric April-Based CAR Domain Enables Efficient Targeting of Multiple Myeloma. Right. Um, as you all know, there has been lots of excitement about um, CAR T therapy with now two FDA approved CD19 targeting uh, products, so that now patients with relapsed and refractory um, pediatric ALL, as well as patients with relapsed and refractory 
DLBCL can uh, profit from this um, novel therapy. Right. And I know that uh, most um, of our audience is well uh, acquainted with um, chimeric antigen receptors. Nevertheless, because it's going to be um, important later throughout my talk, I would just like to run you again through the major components that make up a chimeric antigen receptor. So a car has three major components. Um, first, there is um, an extracellular domain um, on the outside that is responsible um, for binding of the antigen. And in most cases, this is uh, based on a single chain vari variable fragment that has been derived from an antibody. Then there is a transmembrane domain, which most often is derived from the transmembrane domain of another molecule, for example, CD8 or an immunoglobulin. And then on the inside, we have um, the signaling domains that are uh, derived from the TCR and that are responsible for translating the CAR's engagement into T cell activation, proliferation, and um, cytotoxicity. And as um, Shaxida already correctly pointed out, when we now turn to myeloma, of course, uh, we are going to be first talking about CAR T, cell, uh, CAR T cells that target the B cell maturation antigen, or short BCMA, um, that have shown the most promising results um, so far. In one early phase clinical study, CAR T cells um, targeting BCMA showed in a population of uh, multiple myeloma patients that had relapse and refractory disease, an overall response rate of 85%. However, when looking at um, the longer term follow-up of these patients, we noticed that most remissions in response to BCMA-directed CAR-T therapy have not been sustained long-term. At the active dose level, that is shown here um, with the red line, the median progression-free survival was 11.8 months. This indicates that monospecific targeting of BCMA with CAR T cells may not be a curative therapy for most myeloma patients. Now, in the CAR field, um, combinatorial antigen approaches have been or are currently being um, investigated for a, a number of different indications. And preclinical data suggests that combinatorial antigen targeting approaches are a way to circumvent antigen escape, but also to improve efficacy of CAR T cell therapy. So we therefore decided to develop a combinatorial antigen targeting approach for multiple myeloma. Um, and our approach was to target besides BCMA, which we already know is a good um, multiple myeloma associated antigen, a second um, tumor antigen, which is called TASI. And what makes both of these attractive targets is the fact that they both have been shown to be upregulated on nearly all malignant plasma cells. And the fact that the expression of BCMA and TASI is uh, restricted um, to B cells. Um, and this means that the predictable um, tox or potential toxicity of this car should be limited to the B cell compartment. So how do we do this? How can we target BCMA and TASI simultaneously? We, the answer is um, pretty easy. We just need to look into nature and there we can find um, that BCMA and TASI have a common um, natural ligand that is called April. So April um, naturally binds to both these receptors, to BCMA and TASI. It is physiologically produced by myeloid cells in the bone marrow microenvironment. And it has been shown that uh, signaling of April through BCMA and TASI promotes survival and proliferation of multiple myeloma. So therefore, we thought that using the natural ligand April 
to design a car binding domain will allow us to target both these myeloma associated antigens simultaneously. But before um, jumping in and starting to make new cars against multiple myeloma, we first wanted to confirm in a patient cohort of our own that indeed BCMA and TAFC are good targets. So in collaboration with the MGH clinical flow core, we checked the expression of BCMA and TAFC on plasma cells of 29 multiple myeloma patients. And for this graph, the patients were grouped according to the number of previous lines of therapies that they had received. And encouragingly, we found that BCMA and TASI were expressed on the majority of plasma cells and that this was true um, throughout all the different um, therapy stages. However, um, we knew that uh, for our study to test um, the, the new um, myeloma cars that we were about to design, we would also need a couple of cell lines that we could work with. And um, so we found um, in the, shown in the top panel two multiple myeloma cell lines that um, nicely reflect the expression of BCMA and TASI that we had seen in the patient samples. So um, for the experiments that I'm going to be showing you later, for some of them, we use the RPMI A226 cell line, and for others, the MM1S cell line, and both of these are double positive for BCMA and TASI. And in addition, we um, also made two KFF62-based artificial antigen-presenting cells that expressed either only BCMA or only TASI, uh, which are shown in the in the bottom uh, in the bottom two panels. So, having established um, this, we could now um, finally um, start go ahead and make new cars. Um, however, the very first car that we uh, synthesized actually uh, was not that new. The very first one we made uh, and which would um, serve as our control car throughout the experiments is a uh, anti BCMA car. Uh, that closely reflects the design um, of the cars that are clinically um, tested. Uh, so this car has an has an antigen binding domain that is based on an on an SCFB. Um, and um, we know that for cars that are um, SCFB based, um, it is thought that they need to homodimerize in order to be signaled. So two of these cars would have to come together in order um, to signal. So when designing now our April-based cars, we encountered the following challenge. Um, while, as I um, just pointed out, it is thought that SCFB-based cars need to homodimerize in order to be able to signal, April naturally does form um, homotrimers. So we came up with two uh, approaches um, to get around this potential problem. The first one um, was to generate a car that we termed April, that, that consists of um, one truncated April monomer um, as the antigen binding domain, and that has a 41BB transmembrane domain in order to encourage trimerization through the antigen binding site. Sorry, through the transmembrane domain. Second, we also made a car that, sorry, the slides are moving slowly. Finally, sorry for, for that delay. 
And so um, our second approach was um, to make a car that had three truncated April monomers uh, linked to each other in order to encourage trimerization through the, um, the antigen binding site. So next we were interested to study the multimerization patterns um, of all our three car constructs and to do so we express them in first in jerk cells that lacked expression of the endogenous cd3 zeta chain so. So there we go, sorry. Um, so here we have the expressed um, all our three card constructs in jicket cells that lack endogenous expression of the CD3 zeta chain. We then performed SDS page under reducing and non-reducing conditions and uh, probed the Western blots with an anti-CD3 zeta antibody. And we found that under reducing conditions, um, we were able to confirm expression of um, all three car constructs at the expected um, sizes. And when looking at the non-reducing condition, we found that all the three cars that we had designed spontaneously formed um, trimer. So this was um, a good start. So we now knew that both our April and our tripal car are able to form trimers. So with this, we could now um, proceed to characterize their binding and functional properties when they are transduced into human cells. So the, the first thing we did here was to test their binding affinity by incubating um, our car cells with labeled soluble BCMA and labeled soluble TASI over a range of different concentrations. And we found that BCMA car bound strongly to, to BCMA, but poorly to soluble TASI, which is what we expected. For the April car, I'm shown in purple, we found that binding capacity to both BCMA and TASI was low, whereas the tripral car shown in green had um, a high binding capacity for both BCMA and TASI, although the binding capacity to BCMA was lower than that of the anti-BCMA car. Another important um, measure to test um, effector function of cars is their cytotoxic potential. So this is what we tested next against. So our cars were tested against a panel of BCMA and or TASI positive target cells. The upper two graphs uh, show cytotoxicity of our cars against multiple myeloma cell lines that are positive for both BCMA and TASI. And here we noted that BCMA car and tripal car cause specific lysis equally well, while the killing by the um, April monomer car was lower. The two lower panels show lysis of target cells that were only positive for either BCMA, shown on the left, or only positive for TASI shown on the right. So for the BCMA positive target cells, again, we saw that um, BCMA car and tripro car killed at a similar high extent. And the April car showed lower cytotoxicity. And when testing these cells against target cells that uh, were TASI positive only, we noticed that only April and tripal car were able to efficiently lyse these while the BCMA car um, showed a lysis that was low and comparable to the uh, untransduced control cells. To further characterize the effector functions of our cars, we um, also performed um, 
T cell degranulation and T cell um, activation assays by co culturing them with target cells and measuring the surface expression of CD1078 and um, CD69. So, on the left is shown um, our degranulation assay where we found that, again, BCMA CAR T's and TRIPRO CAR T's, when co-cultured with multiple myeloma target cells, showed um, robust degranulation, while, again, April CAR T's only showed a weak degranulation response. And um, we observed something similarly for the activation assay, where we measured upregulation of CD69. So CD69 expression was um, highly upregulated on BCMA CAR T's and uh, TRIPRO CAR T's after co-culture with their targets, while April again only upregulated CD69 weekly in response to double positive um, target cells. And interestingly, our um, TRIPRO CAR upregulated um, CD69 strongly in response to target cells expressing either BCMA, TASI, or both. Another important measure of effector function is the secretion of cytokines. So we first looked at um, bulk um, cytokine production um, from our different CAR-T populations. For this, we used um, supernatants from co-culture of CAR T cells with multiple myeloma target cells and found um, on a bulk level that all our CAR constructs um, produced Th1 type cytokines in an antigen specific manner like, for example, IL-2, interferon gamma, GMCSF and TNF-alpha to a similar extent. Um, so this was um, not that well matching what we had previously seen um, from our other um, in vitro testing. And more recently, polyfunctional cytokine production at the single cell level has emerged as a correlative function of CAR T cell products that can successfully induce clinical responses in patients with lymphoma. We were therefore interested to also measure cytokine secretion in our CAR-T populations, but this time on a single cell level. And so we worked together um, with isoplexes and um, performed a 32-plex um, cytokine assay together with them, where our CARs were stimulated with um, BCMA and TASI antigen. And for this assay, polyfunctionality is defined as the secretion of either two or more cytokines. And what we found that um, in this readout, indeed, we did see quite um, differences between our different CAR populations. For the CD4 compartment, we noticed that um, BCMA CAR T's and TRIPRO CAR T's um, had a higher content of polyfunctional T cells than the April CAR T's. And this difference was even more pronounced um, for the CD4 positive compartment, where the TRIPRO CAR T's had the highest uh, proportion of polyfunctional T cells. And as a last part um, of our in vitro testing, we were also interested to measure the proliferative capacity of our um, CAR T populations. To do so, we performed weekly stimulation with K562 antigen presenting cells that either expressed BCMA or TASI and um, checked um, the growth of our CARs under these stimulations. So when stimulating with BCMA positive targets, we noticed that the BCMA CAR and the TRIPRO CAR grew logarithmic, logarithmically over four weeks. Uh, while the April CAR initially also grew logarithmically, but then started tapering after week two. And on the right side, when we were stimulating our CARs with 
target cells that were TASI only positive, we noticed that only tripro CAR T's and APRO CAR T's showed significant proliferation, while as expected, the BCMA CAR T's did not, um, did not grow by this um, stimulus. So after this thorough um, in vitro testing, we were then interested to know how the anti-tumor efficiency of our cars would be in an in vivo model. So we choose um, a xenograft mouse model of multiple myeloma in which NSG mice were intravenously injected with 1 million MM1S cells. And we allowed then the tumors to engraft over 14 days. And on day zero, mice were then injected with a single dose of 2 million either BCMA CAR, APRO CAR, TRIPRO CAR, or UTD cells. And we then um, regularly monitored um, the mice. And what we noticed is that while the tumor burden continuously progressed in the UTD treated group, all CAR T treated mice showed anti tumor responses. However, in this high tumor burden model, only the BCMA CAR and the TRIPRO CAR Ts were able to eradicate the tumors, while the, the monomeric APRIL CAR Ts only led to a stabilization um, of the tumor burden. So when we um, quantified um, these responses, I'm shown on the left, we found that um, there was no difference in terms of the deepness of response um, between the BCMA CAR and the TRIPRIL CAR. We also were interested to see if um, our CAR T cells would expand and persist in the peripheral blood of the mice and found that some of them did indeed and then that they had quite different kinetics. For the BCMA CAR shown in black, we noticed a rapid increase and then contraction at day 14 post CAR T administration. In, in contrast, TRIPRO, shown in green, underwent a slower expansion um, and had still increasing numbers um, on day 14. And again, here the April cars did not show a significant expansion in the peripheral blood. So taking this data together, um, we came to the conclusion that our monomeric April car was not optimally functional against multiple myeloma. And therefore, we decided to focus um, for further studies on comparing triprol CAR Ts to BCMA CAR Ts, and in particular, their responsiveness to multiple myeloma that um, has a loss of the BCMA antigen. So to do so, we generated uh, a new multiple myeloma cell line that would allow us to model antigen escape. To this end, we used the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technology and knocked out BCMA from the MM1S cell line. We then performed an in vivo experiment with a very similar to timeline to the one that I just showed you, with the only exception that in this experiment, we also included a group of mice that um, had received tumor only treatment and did not get injected with CAR T's in order to be able to assess the tumor genesity um, in the absence of the BCMA antigen and to control for allogeneic rejection. And again, when looking at tumor burn and quantifying it, we found that only the triple CAR T's were able to clear tumors by day 14 in this BCMA negative model. And this was consistent with antigen specific response um, induced through the CAR Ts. While at later time point, we noticed some tumor regression also in the other groups. However, um, comparing this to the UTD treated group, um, we consider the, 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 the small response that we also saw in the BCMA CAR treated group to be rather a non antigen specific allogeneic um, rejection. So, 
finally, when thinking of how to translate um, triplocars into clinical application, there is one other important aspect to consider. It has been reported that multiple myeloma patients have increased concentrations of soluble BCMA, soluble TASI, and soluble April in the peripheral blood and also in the bone marrow. So we were interested to find out whether soluble BCMA, soluble TASI, and soluble April block triple CAR T cell lysis of multiple myeloma cells. To do so, we set up an experiment where we co-cultured triprocartes with multiple myeloma target cells and um, added in soluble um, compet like competitive ligands at a range of different concentrations. And what we found is that at the highest concentrations um, of soluble BCMA and soluble, A uh, soluble April, um, the cytotoxicity of tripro was reduced at the lowest effector to target ratios um, tested. Interestingly, um, high levels of TASI did not reduce the toxicity of tripro CAR Ts. It is important to point out that the concentrations that we used in this experiment for soluble TASI and soluble April by far um, exceed the concentrations that have been reported in multiple myeloma patients. However, this, the highest concentration of soluble BCMA that we used is um, similar to concentrations that have been reported in the blood of patients with advanced multiple myeloma. So these data indicate that binding of soluble BCMA to tripro may inhibit its activity at low effector to target ratios, but this may potentially be overcome with either higher doses of tripro CAR T or by aiming at reducing the concentration of soluble BCMA with other therapies. So with this, I would like um, to come the, to the end of my talk and um, summarize. So what I hope I was able to show you is that our April-based chimeric antigen receptors are able to redirect um, T-cell cytotoxicity to both BCMA and TASI positive tumor cells. Since both these receptors are consistently upregulated on malignant plasma cells, this is an attractive approach to target multiple myeloma. Furthermore, we found that using a trimeric form of April rather than a more monomeric form as the antigen receptor binding domain increased the potency of the CAR against multiple myeloma, both in vitro and in vivo. And we are currently working on um, preparing for a phase one trial with a triple CAR T's. So finally, I would like to thank um, the many people who helped me with this project. Above all, I would like to thank my wonderful mentor, Marcela Moss, all the members um, of the Moss Lab and our collaborators. And I would like to thank you again very much for your interest and attention. Great, thank you so much, Andrea, uh, for sharing some of the exciting work that you and your team have been doing um, so far. Um, just a reminder for you all to keep submitting your questions. Uh, if you haven't done so already, we have been receiving a few of them. Um, so please keep on doing that. We'll definitely get to those towards the end uh, of the session today with our live Q&A. Uh, just before we head over to that Q&A, I'd like to hand over to John uh, for a short presentation focusing on ISOPEXIS's next generation automated functional proteomics. Um, Thanks so much, uh, Shikshita, um, and thank you, Andrea, for a great presentation. Um, just pull up this monitor real quick. So um, today I'll be talking about how isoplexis and the isolite system are accelerating the next generation of cancer immunotherapies with functional proteomics and phenotyping of each cell. Um, so our leap 
Octane Innovation has allowed us to be the only company able to detect the range of functional extracellular proteins per single cell, um, which has led to our rapid growth. Isoplexus has very quickly launched Isolites throughout the world to uh, 58 sites since 2018. We have about 160 users at those sites, um, as well as more than 75 publications worldwide, proving the unique value of our system. And our company has changed significantly in the last two years as we expanded from 30 to 130 people um, and are increasing significant incoming demand for our unique functional single cell proteomics as a need to have solution. So what's unique and innovative about Isoplexus's single cell functional phenotyping? Uh, we'll take you on a short little tour to find out. The differences between bulk is that bulk averages serum protein information from all cells. And in a variety of immunotherapy trials, stratification of responders and non-responders is not possible from the bulk cytokine. And data shows that what we're doing is, um, and what each heterogeneous immune cell produces uh, in terms of cytokine production matters, yet bulk masks these cellular differences. Um, there are current technologies available uh, for looking at the inside of the cell, such as with RNA-seq, uh, or the surface of the cell, such as with flow, um, but there's a gap in identifying the extracellular functional phenotype of each cell, and this is where isoplexus comes in. For single cell, we're filling a gap as the only technology to do something um, very obviously important, which is directly detecting the functional cytokines, which matter for each immune cell. It's common knowledge that each immune cell is different, and so characterizing each cell is quite important. You measure the transcriptome via single cell genomics, for example, and you measure the surface phenotype via flow to define each cell. Yet the gap that is the cellular definition um, is not defined by an extracellular cytokine uh, that are doing the work in cancer immunology. And so why is single cell uh, cytokine is so important, um, and you know it's almost obvious that it can't be overlooked. That uh, uh, our leap in innovation um, is able to characterize this, and it's because the cytokine function dictates the response of each cell to the tumor. Um, the CD4 cells with cytokines orchestrate the rest of the cells to attack the tumor. Um, the CD8 cells uh, and NK cells with cytokines deliver the payload to the tumor, for example, and the macrophages and Treg cells with cytokines can drive tumor uh, immune suppression. And so cytokine functional phenotyping is now well known to be uh, quite important. Uh, we're finding what's really happening in patients um, with these correlations um, and uh, in uh, over 50 correlative cancer immunology cases. At the right there, uh, our functional phenotypes are illustrating the large patient differences between the different types of patient responses that you can't see on other platforms. Uh, these large differences uh, result in statistically significant correlations to best response, uh, durable response, and progression. And a lot of this new public data in the last 12 months from various leaders in, uh, in the clinic um, in correlative com combination checkpoint therapy, um, checkpoint therapy in solid tumors uh, with major academics um, and, and pharma users. Um, we have correlated by specific data, uh, pegylated IL-2 data, uh, which was recently published in Nature Communication. And in many and most of the most critical immune cell types, um, T cells, uh, suppressive macrophages, um, NK cells, and more. And we've translated that insight to accelerating preclinical development, uh, showing what's really happening and illustrating large differences leading to choice, uh, such as in those cases, um, correlative, pegylated solid tumor therapies um, by specific cancer vaccines, uh, all showing unique differences that lead to accelerated decisions. In addition to the cases mentioned, uh, cutting edge papers in high impact journals are utilizing this technology uh, from identifying the functional drivers of T cell persistence um, in you know, a recently published gastroenterology paper, as well as Nature Communications, and the immune suppression of monocytes and tumor resistance pathways um, as published in Cancer Cell. 
there's been an uh, accelerated growth in publications covering these topics um, of everything from patient stratification and response prediction to persistence, um, suppression, resistance, and toxicity, uh, highlighting the utilization of the cutting edge technology is being recognized as a standard biomarker. And isotoxicity platform was uh, recognized as the only functional analysis tool uh, within the book that was recently published, um, Biomarkers for the Immunotherapy of Cancer uh, for 2020. And among the current technology methods mentioned earlier in the presentation, there are flow tools, there are single cell genomics tools, but the only way to assess the true function of each cell is the isolate platform. And this emerging standard tool is uniquely uncovering uh, functional biological drivers, which take things forward in the development pipeline, um, overcoming challenges from preclinical aspects of cancer immunology uh, to clinical aspects within functional biomarkers. Completely automated for the first time, uh, this next generation functional cellular proteomics is performed on uh, one single system. The highly multiplexed um, uh, isolate uh, for over 30 cytokines simultaneously, um, and it is able to cover a variety of cell types uh, with our unique chip products and uh, unique panels. Our leap in innovation versus flow cytometry, uh, which is the current standard for cellular characterization, is that flow surface phenotypes um, for many surface markers, or you block a few cytokines within the cell without detecting what's truly being secreted. What isoplexus has shown is instead of surface phenotyping, is uh, that we're providing uniquely functional phenotyping instead. Uh, we uniquely measure the 30 plus cytokines that are defining the work of each T cell, uh, macrophage, uh, or NK cell. And we've seen differences in patients uh, missed in flow phenotyping, where the isoplexus functional phenotype was able to stratify patients. Um, the issue with using cellular RNA to estimate cytokine production is that um, there can be a low correlation of actual RNA production, um, something around 0.4 to the translation of which protein is secreted from the cells. Um, and this can then mask functional extracellular phenotyping differences. Um, we'll now tell you a little of um, how our single cell proteomic phenotyping technology measures these cytokines, uh, which unveil the biological drivers and biomarkers in both preclinical and clinical works. To illustrate the innovation for cellular analysis uh, further and more simply, our chip takes a uh, simulated immune sample and targets um, around 500 to over 1,000 cells into single cell chambers. And the leap is that each cell is isolated and then secretes the cytokines against a parallelized antibody barcode, such that when the ELISA is run, each barcode can be read by the software for intensity and therefore concentration. This is again, um, like uh, you know, around a thousand highly multiplexed bulk ELISA reactions in parallel, except for each single cell. Additionally, the background from zero cell chambers allows us to set quantitative uh, signal background, utilizing the entire chip as a signal detection system. The isolate instrument's innovation is that it processes eight chips in parallel in one system. Um, it houses a live cell incubator, uh, three, three laser-based imaging system, and a wholly automated fluidic system in one instrument, um, where you know, traditional bulk systems typically have multiple instruments to read and wash. And finally, the breakthrough can be illustrated in cost. Um, the cost of each reaction is less than 60 cents and around three cents per analyte per reaction. Um, this illustrates the scale of the reduction in price per individual sample reaction um, of a highly multiplex cell. The isolate platform enables full automation of your entire proteomics workflow with one system, giving you the ability to run an entire multiplex ELISA workflow in a completely automated and hands-off manner. Traditional multiplex uh, bulk ELISA platforms require multiple instruments and multiple personnel, in addition to long wait times uh, for data analysis. And with the isolate, you can add uh, your sample and walk away 
um, achieving fully analyzed data on the same day. Um, no additional equipment is needed. A fully automated workflow means um, you know, no washing and incubation stations, a note plate reader uh, to run those proteomic workflows. You can unlock your data immediately, um, which uh, end up lowering costs per run um, and total instrumentation requirements. All of your proteomic needs are integrated into the completely automated isolate system. After sample prep uh, on the isolate platform, you load the cells, uh, the system images the cells, and the cells secrete their proteins which attach to the single cell proteomic barcode that you see there on the right, uh, which is then imaged um, at step two. The isolite is a highly efficient all-in-one system to reduce hands-on time. The isolite performs all downstream ELISA steps. Um, again, again, it performs the proteomic imaging to detect the fluorescence of that barcode to get our automated uh, software analysis. Yeah. And so uh, what that entails is Auto, uh, ISO Speaks automated push button analytics completes the end to end uh, democratized system. The automated analysis allows for on site analysis with push button user interface, um, allowing for easy visualization of cellular communication. Our powerful and intuitive ISO Speaks software suite finds the differences in patient populations through both cellular figures and statistical frequency bar graphs. Um, for an example, the software allows users to annotate all data with patient or preclinical info. Um, for example, here, um, let's say you have 15 patients here in each responder and non-responder population. Um, after getting the function of each cell at the far left, we then generate Isoplexus's 3D TISNY functional graphs. The TISNY graph plots uh, cells by differentiating the cells to either end of that chart based on their greatest cytokine uh, functional differences. Um, in this example, we see stratification differences driving responders versus non-responders, uh, much like we have seen in over 50 precedent data sets. Next, um, that same plot is used to uncover functional sources of the cellular biomarkers of response. Multifunctional cells secreting multiple cytokines uh, termed polyfunctional cells, are upregulated uh, in these responders. And then we, re uh, we reveal the sources of functional bio biological drivers in the various cytokines that are listed below, um, such as granzyme B, uh, MIP1-alpha, I think gamma, perforin, IL-5, TNF-alpha, um, et cetera. And we can turn these plots then into uh, typical frequency plots to generate statistics to detect uh, the significant correlation, such as the percentage of cells that are polyfunctional or the percentage of cells that are multiplied um, you know, by sig signal intensity, which gives us the, the polyfunctional strength index there. Uh, the isolite is a hub for comprehensive functional profiling of each cell type across a large assay menu of single cell chip and software products. Uh, we start with many sample preparation protocols validated and published um, many times over. Um, next are population codeplex based chips, uh, which we have just released, are used to um, optimize new simulations uh, quickly, uh, cost efficiently. And uh, these chips measure the 32 cytokines in bulk, um, automated on the isolate, and can selectively run eight conditions um, on a chip in macro chambers across eight chips on a run. And so um, this means you know, less expensive running um, uh, versus an entire plate and some, a modular system so you can get your data faster. After optimization, we offer our large menu of single cell chip solutions and panels with uh, more on the way in pre-release mode. Um, covering almost each cell type from T cells to macrophages, NK cells and more, including single cell polyfunctional strength um, in both human and mouse, um, single cell and innate and myeloid is now available as a solution to functionally characterize innate and myeloid cells. Um, and we have multiple tumor functional signaling uh, focused assays that have published, um, and these are releasing late 2020. Finally, we offer multiple cell subset panels for surface staining as well. Um, our Isolite acts as a hub. Um, the Isospeak software family provides an application suite supporting each of those above chips, 
Um, and this creates an innovative and impactful end-to-end -end workflow and application on almost every key cell type, from early optimization to applying key correlative insights um, and visualizations. And with that, um, I just want to thank you, um, as well as Andrea, um, uh, for a great presentation. And I believe we'll open up to questions now. Uh, we hope we've given you an indication on why this functional phenotyping of your cells with our proteomic barcoding technology is uh, emerging as the standard tool for understanding the function of each cell type. Um, thank you. Great. Thank, thank you so much, John. Um, it was great to hear a little bit more about Isoplex's most novel um, and next generation technologies. Um, as you mentioned, we'll move into the, the audience Q&A. We have um, around 10 minutes uh, for that. So we have a few questions that have already been coming in. But if I can remind everyone to please submit their questions via the questions tab on your webinar dashboard. Um, keep, keep submitting them. We're going to start answering some now. So um, any that don't get answered, as I mentioned at the beginning, will be shared um, in the post-event report after this webinar as well. Um, but to kick us off, uh, I have a question here for Andrea uh, from the audience. Um, uh, Andrea, what is known about BCMA expression levels uh, in patients who relapse after BCMA targeting CAR T therapy? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, that that is a, it is indeed a very um, interesting and very important question. Um, to state very briefly, um, there is a lot less known about the BCMA status uh, post BCMA CAR targeted therapy than we know about the situation for um, patients who have received received CD19 targeting CAR T cell therapy and relapse. So in those patients um, who initially respond to CD19 um, therapy but then go on and relapse, we have enough data to say that complete loss of CD19 antigen is definitely a major mechanism. Um, however, since we don't have that many data um, for the situation with BCMA, um, this data is still kind of evolving, um, coming out of, of these first um, clinical trials that we have. There have been some reports suggesting that um, complete loss of BCMA antigen is what happens in multiple myeloma patients who stop responding to therapy. However, there have also been a couple of rep reports suggesting that it's only a down regulation of the BCMA antigen that, um, that they see in patients um, post BCMA target therapies who um, stop responding. Um, so this is going to be a, yeah, a very, very interesting um, thing to keep um, watching and um, and better learn what the exact um, mechanism of resistance to BCMA targeted CAR T cell therapy is. Great, thank you. Um, and so a question for John. Um, does the ISO speak software enable further clarity into what underlies the differences in polyfunctional subsets and where the single cell contribution is coming from? Yeah, uh, thanks. Yeah, so with the ISOSpeak software, we can start driving into the intricacies of uh, single cell data and look at where these single cell contributions are coming from. Uh, since we collect the functional cytokine data from each single cell across 30 to 40 cytokines, using the ISOSpeak software, we can um, start to uncover the cytokine uh, secretion frequencies, intensities, and polyfunctionalities uh, from the samples, in addition to advanced uh, 3D TISNI cell mapping. And for a deeper dive into the data, we can look at the unique cytokine contributions to each polyfunctional cell, as well as automatically put together polyfunctional heat maps and PCA type analysis to look at the functional cytokine drivers um, of those polyfunctional subsets. Okay, great. Um, another question for Andrea. Um, how does a ligand-based antigen binding domain compared to a SCSB-based antigen binding domain when incorporated into a CAR? Mm -hmm. So, um, as I um, also showed you on one of the first slides, I think one major difference between a ligand 
based car and an SCFB based car, maybe that um, we're talking about different um, binding affinities for their antigens. And generally speaking, likely um, the affinity of an SCFB based um, car is going to be higher than that of the natural ligand. However, we also know that in terms of affinity of the car, um, it's it's kind of um, a spectrum, and it may be that a very, very high affinity of the car can also lead to clustering of the car um, in the absence of the antigen, which can lead to tonic signaling and um, exhaustion of the T-cell. On the other side of the spectrum, of course, we also don't want a car binding domain that has very low affinity. So, um, and I think that choosing a natural ligand binder may uh, maybe allow us to be somewhere um, more in the middle of this spectrum and therefore may allow for a more balanced activation of T cells. And one other um, important difference is that most of the SCFBs that are currently used um, for cars are often um, from a murine sequence because they are derived from um, murine antibodies against a certain antigen. Whereas um, our, um, for example, our approach here and um, choosing to use a natural ligand allowed us to use a fully human sequence um, of our car, which may be, um, good in terms of allowing cars with a fully human sequence to persist longer and um, avoid that um, there is a trigger of immune rejection, which could occur if, um, if there are murine sequences in the car. Okay, great. Um, and then a, a slight follow-up to the previous question uh, for John. Um, has polyfunctionality correlated with response in other areas of research? If so, where and in what disease and therapeutic areas? Uh, yeah, in, a, in addition to cancer immunotherapy, um, such as in you know, T-cell persistence and solid tumor, um, as well as areas in checkpoint therapies and combination therapies, um, engineered cell therapies, et cetera. Um, we've also found that polyfunctional metrics uh, from you know, unique innate and myeloid cells have correlated with progression and response in areas such as autoimmune diseases and inflammatory diseases. Um, and we've also published data um, in vaccine development and infectious diseases um, such as malaria vaccines. And so, you know, everything from looking at that tumor immune interaction um, or the immune host interaction um, from toxicity, CRS, into response, um, we've definitely been seeing really interesting uh, metrics in that um, re related to polyfunctionality. Okay, and so last question uh, before we finish up here today. Um, is this is for Andrea? Um, is the epitope on April shared between BCMA and TACI? And is there competition between BCMA and TACI for going to April? Uh, sorry, I didn't get the very last um, part of the question. I'm just going to repeat the first part as I heard it. Okay. So I think the question was whether how similar BCMA and TASI are, if, if that's correct? Uh, so the first part is, is the epitope on April shared between BCMA and TACI? Um, no, so if, if I understand the question um, correctly, um, no, so the um, it's a different domain within April that um, mediates a binding to BCMA and the domain that mediates the binding to TASI. So it's, it's not shared, second, no. Sorry, and then the second part of that question was, is there competition between the BCMA and the TASI to bind to April? Um, so, 
Yes, if you like, I would say yes. There, um, there may be competition between um, BCMA and TASI to bind April, since um, yeah, they are both receptors for it. So ideally, um, you would want to be in a situation where you have um, a good effector to target ratios between um, CAR T cells um, that express an April-based ligand and the target cells that express BCMA and TASI. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for everyone for submitting those questions. Um, and also thank you so much to Andrea and John for your answers and for your earlier presentations. That is all that we have time for today, and we hope you've enjoyed this session. As mentioned previously, all unaddressed questions will be passed on to the speakers and shared in the post-event report. So if you do have any follow-up questions or comments, please email these to myself. Uh, that's shakpeter.desai at hansonwade.com. Um, and I'll repeat that again, shakpeter.desai at hansonwade.com. Uh, the recorded webinar will be shared with you all shortly in our post-event email. Thank you again all for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.